Hello and welcome everybody, I'm Necromanticer, and today we're going to be playing Sang Fua, Tales of Werewolves Tome 1. This is a very interesting little strategy RPG that I've been playing recently and I've been having a lot of fun with, so I thought I'd bring it to you all. You can have the options between playing Joss or Jack. They say they're separated by difficulty, but Joss is a bit of a slower, more bruisey, combat-focused character, while Jack is a lot faster and has a little bit less stamina, so it's a lot closer to how you want to be playing the game rather than difficulty, though there is a slim margin of difference there as well. Chapter 1, Exile and Reunion As I live and breathe, if it isn't my little sister, Josephine, what good wind blows you to the deepest, darkest forest to see your hermit brother? More like a storm, I'm afraid. The parish priest went crazy and jumped me like a demon when I was dusting the sacristy. I tried As you can to tell, the, with the candle abroad, animation and voice the acting isn't quite the there, but it has a very loving Ever theme. Since, it's very rustic, and it all comes together quite nicely. My fault. That's just crazy! Doesn't make any sense at all. But hey, don't just stand there like you're holding up the doorpost. The thing is, you see, Jacques, I'm not alone. And that's where we come in. Don't worry. It wasn't my idea to come here, bro. Loving family dynamic. Joseph Who doesn't love that? Me, the villagers would have torn me to pieces in the village square. He can't live there anymore either. Please, Jacques, for the love of our mother, let bygones be bygones and let us both stay here with you. Well, I guess. But first, take care of this dangerous that? animal out there. Sounds like a wolverine's outside spooking our horses. Yeah, a little Since bit silly, but off me, Joseph, it works. Might as well make yourself useful and chase it away, will ya? Meanwhile, I'll heat up some tea for our sister. To be honest, that really didn't sound like a wolverine. She's got a fever. Grumble, grumble. Now hush up and get out there, Joe, so we can get to work. It's an awful lot of blood for a wolverine spooking horses, but let's get to it. As you can see, the game has a stamina system, and while that's certainly not a wolverine, I'll be, I'll be able to take care of it just fine. Your wolverine looks a lot more like a wolf, Jackie boy. The pack must be close by. Let's get on over there, Joe, and see what we can do with this little axe of ours. Now, this game has a stamina system that is used for sprinting, all sorts of attack combos, like so. And also for dodge rolling, which can come in quite handy, but also uses up a ridiculous amount of stamina, which takes quite a while to regen, and locks you into an animation, so you want to be very wary about how you use it. You'll find that sprinting is more often than not a better alternative. The bridge to the how exactly the Looks wolves like managed to light a bridge on fire is a little bit beyond me, but... I just accept it as part of the conceit of the story. Speaking of Combat. the game, it really likes to give you large and obnoxious cutscenes in order to explain very mundane and simple mechanics, and I think that's one of its big failings, but so long as you uh, skip them, they're not usually too much of an issue, and while you can't turn them off, they are extremely useful for beginners, so I can understand why they come up. It's trying to get me to use my rage attack, but I'm much more used to managing my stamina in such a way that I don't need to intersperse my rage attack in there, but it is an extra facet of combat that you can be using. May Satan have mercy on me! For the love of God, please help me! Yeah, yeah, whatever. Let's get over there and help the poor Miller. But before we do, let's skip another of these annoying tutorials the that explains the rifle, which is basically your only form of long-range combat. And while you can right-click it to make it reload slightly faster as a way of keeping you engaged, I'm probably not going to be using too much of it because it slows down combat a lot, and instead focusing on using it for triggering traps. As I said before, though, you can use a rage attack when your uh, axe is on fire in order to do extra damage and actually stun opponents out, so it's really useful to intersperse that into your regular combat. 
The good Lord has sent you. Without your help, I would have been devoured like a rabbit. Ah, you were safe up in the tree. You, Miller. I think they heard you all the way in Quebec City. Yeah, he was kind of obnoxious. There's a pack of rabid wolves around here. How many? Dozens, hundreds, maybe. That's that's not a pack. That's they like a horde or an army. Mill in the east. Go see by yourself if you want. Yeah, yeah, As we'll take me, care of it for I'm you. We're the only one who does anything around here, but company. well, that's an act. Let's hop to. Nothing me and my axe can't handle. But the Rage Attack is also extremely useful in that it doesn't use up any stamina, meaning that it's great for buying yourself some time and distance while you regenerate some of that. Here, they're introducing one of the really unique mechanics in the game, which is Fear Factor. That is basically the level of intimidation you have, and you can use that to keep the enemies at bay and allow yourself some time to regen some stamina and possibly just make some distance. You can see in the bottom left two numbers you, and the rage attack obviously takes him out quite nicely but the wolf's number is their fear factor while my number is in the bottom left. It goes up whenever you're near fire and it keeps them at bay so long as your number is greater. As time wears on however they get braver and braver and soon enough they'll attack you. Or, if I go away from the fire, he gets a little bit braver and tries to rush me. But it's all about managing your stamina and making sure that you're safe when you need to regen by having a larger fear factor. They're also going to show you exactly how to modify fear factor even more right up here. With the shout ability. This is basically you just intimidating the wolves directly. And by shouting, I can reduce their fear factor by quite a lot, which allows me to take them on either one at a time or in small groups to maximize my combat efficiency. Because attacking multiple enemies is a very powerful way to keep yourself in it. And you can even use your power attack to stun out singular enemies if you really need to just to get that little bit of extra damage. But that's how you take them out. Just keep them afraid of you and you won't have any problems. Yes, I am definitely the only one who gets anything done around here, that's so let's go back to the cabin and I my save them. Two seconds and he's in hot water. I better get back to the cabin as quick as I can. And as quick as he can clearly means that he's going to teleport, so Let's ignore the tutorial sections that teach you how to drink a potion and tell you that your house actually has a health bar, but that's actually very simple, so we don't need to know any of that. Oh, bollocks. Let's turn that right around on him. Get near fire to modify my fear factor, keep them at bay, and engage when I've got the stamina and confidence to come on in. Take this guy out. I've got my Rage Attack for some extra damage, and he is toast. Beautiful fight. That's exactly how you want to manage everything. Admittedly, Fear Factor isn't perfect. They will still attack if you get close to them, but it will keep them from coming in at you. They speak to me. Meanwhile, our I sister has them. contracted the possession. Especially it's a very dangerous I illness see, in I these times. The there, there wasn't any cures. They were sent by the devil. <laughs> And yes, we're going to be facing the devil coming up soon enough, so she started get ready. Like a crazy person. Then she let out an awful scream and fell to the ground. Damn it, I asked you to watch her. Well, he did watch there her. Was nothing he I watched her do. scream and fall Go to the ground. I don't know what happened, but the bridge to Wolf's Vale was burned down. By wolves, we'll that's very strange. But no matter. Chapter 2, Desires and Regrets. My lord, Here we find one of me. my favorite characters. I was overcome with desire. Not this Elziar fellow, just wait. What have I done? What have I done? Who is You're this? You're only a man, Elziar. Who's there? Who are you? But you with a voice actor like that, who else could it be but when the you devil? When to attack your servant Josephine after she'd refused your advances. You can hear how I little he's trying, I love affinities. it. 
But when you let the fire spread in your church after Josephine hit you with the candelabra, when you accused her in front of all the villagers of the crime that you had in fact committed, that was when I knew we were going to do great things together. <laughs> the laugh is brilliant too. You gotta admit. what brings me here to make an offer you can't possibly refuse concerning your lovely and inaccessible servant. He looks like he's gonna cane him. <laughs> it's brilliant. And here we are with the strategy portion of the game. Here we can actually use the premonitions of our sickly sister to tell exactly when and where the enemies of the night are going to be coming and prepare for them adequately with traps that I'm not going to bother wasting your time with tutorials on. Suffice it to say, you can lay down traps at the cost of both time in the form of action points and money in the form of coinage in order to lay down traps that will hurt or waylay passing enemies. Specifically, the wolf traps automatically kill any and all regular wolves, while interesting little traps like this hanging trap can be triggered by a gunshot in order to drop rocks and damage any enemies hanging out below. Now that I've set all those up, I can head right on into the night and show you in person exactly how all that works out. Out into the frosty Canadian north we go, axe in hand, and let's run on over to those wolf traps we lay down and show you exactly what's going on here. These silly little black circles in the ground with uh, corns insignia in the middle of them are wolf traps. They will immediately kill all these normal wolves that pass through. At least one per. Oh, come on. Sadly, oh dear, we get a little bit of a nibble out of us right off the bat. I don't know what went wrong there, but my character did not want to perform the final blow of the combo to get the stun, but no matter. And here they introduce one of the more interesting mechanics in the game, that's detection. Enemies can't actually see you at all, they just hear you. Any sort of line of sights kind of just game mechanics. And the detection works by the little green circle around your character on the minimap is actually how much noise you're making and where you can be heard. You can also use Q to yell and alert Come everything again, within range of the red dotted line of your position, which can be useful to lure enemies into traps like this. As you saw, I yelled right under that hanging net trap, and now I can wait for both of them to line up beneath it and take them all out in one fell swoop. After that, we can reload our little musket type gun and head on over to our next trap to await the next wave. Knock that all out, and on we go. Here we get to wait for the werewolf. It's a loud werewolf, but... Oh, I yelled a little bit too early. That's not good. I was not thinking, and so instead of luring him under this little net trap, you're going to get to see a werewolf in matched combat, which is a scary sight to behold, to be sure. Unless, you know, I think that we can manage it that we activate the trap without him just sitting under there like a blithering idiot. Instead, we'll just shoot it as he walks by. You can see him on the minimap pacing his way over, and as soon as he falls underneath this little... Oh, dear. There we go. I thought he was coming to a different target, but now I can trigger him to come on over, and bam, I missed. That's not good. Oh well. Now we get to show you exactly how to properly kite and manage your stamina. Since there's no fire here, I have no way of modifying my fear factor. Whenever he goes in for a dash like that, you can instead sprint out of it which will keep you at a beautiful range and keep you from avoiding damage at the cost of a little bit of stamina. It just requires some effective timing. Whenever you're using your rage attack, you get a little bit of invincibility because the game's recognizing that you're using a powerful attack. There we go. The only attack in your combo that really matters is the final little clip. Ooh, ouch. Got caught up there. Because it's the final little clip that does the stun. Oh, come off it. There we go. 
get the turnaround combo hit, and there we have it. That's the werewolf down. I may have mucked up that encounter some, but that shows you a little bit more of the diversity of the melee combat. And it does get a little bit more bland when you don't have to worry about fear factor, but that's the match. And afterwards, we get to sell the pelts of our enemies, get lots of experience for all sorts of little bonus objectives, as well as see all of, all of our stuff tallied up and see the health bars of all of our buildings at the end of the night. Chapter 3, Resentment and Damnation. And this brings us once more to the strategy map, where they wish to tell us about the bonfire and a new path that has opened up. As time progresses, the map begins to open up and a whole lot more locations can be found and accessed. But I think this is going to be where I cut it for today. I've done a lot, there's been a lot going on, and there's even more to come upon the morrow as the town opens up to us so thank you all for watching it's been a real pleasure i look forward to spending a little bit more time with this game and seeing how everything comes together but thank you so much for watching and have a great day